Hey, Forrest, here's our lesson for uh, July 29th. And uh, we said that we noticed, you know, some things are kind of morphing and changing in our swing. And so one of the things that we noticed that was inhibiting our ability to kind of hit down onto the golf ball and create some leverage was <clears throat> that in our swing we have kind of developed a case where we are keeping the hands a little low in the back swing and the hands you know, to the top of the swing aren't really able to get up in the air um, so that they can just kind of come down naturally and create some leverage and some speed from the top to hit down onto the golf ball like we were wanting to. So this is a video that you sent me, uh, you know, from the house and where you uh, had the idea there that you're, you know, you're going to get the hands higher um, at, uh, at the top. And so the other thing that we said that we wanted to do was kind of maybe minimize some of the uh, body rotation to the top of the swing. It might be a little bit over-rotated, um, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, we'll draw our trusty line here down the outside of our right leg, and then we'll draw a line up outside, or on, right on top of the left foot there. And so, uh, you know, Otherwise, everything's pretty good. We look like we're pretty squared up. You know, we had talked about our uh, tendency where we're favoring the left side was to kind of get the shoulders and the hips kind of twisted out into left field somewhere. And then we just kind of, as you said, we kind of just kind of turn that back towards the camera, if you will, or, or move the left hip just slightly towards the target, towards the net there. Um, but this is much better than it, and it was the other day. So we go to the top and just kind of put this in motion. And, you know, we said in the office we want to kind of turn those hips a little more centered, and that's pretty good there. That's, that's really good, actually, where, you know, if we look over here on the target side or the net side of this red line that's coming up through your left foot, you know, we don't see any of your hip or pocket or anything kind of jutting out through there, and then this space that we can kind of see the brick wall between your right hip, uh, right thigh, and the red line, that's, that's fairly appropriate, um, because if you're, if you're turning in, in, in place with your hips, then that right hip is going to turn behind you, and so it's going to reveal what's behind you some, and then when it comes back around, it'll close that space up a little bit. So um, that's, that's a pretty good job, and then as we get uh, you know, to the top, there's the hands that have gotten up. You know, if we kind of take it right off of the uh, middle of the left hand, we'll take a line there and we'll see that our hands are, you know, right up here, middle of our head or maybe even higher than the middle of our head. And that's that's much better. And so the hands are still inside plenty. You're going to be able to swing down from the inside but now you've got the hands up, so something that's up can come down easier than something that's already down there. And so we we determined that, you know, that bit where we were kind of coming over the top a little bit and the hands were working towards the camera as we start the downswing uh, was really more because you're trying to create some leverage from a very short uh, arm swing position. And so as we start this swing down, you know, we won't really see the hands move out towards the camera first. They start dropping as the downswing begins, and that's pretty good. Um, but we're shifting to the left, so you know we see over here on the uh, left leg, left hip has shifted through that line. We created uh, or cleared out more space even between the right hip, right thigh, and that uh, right leg line that we initially draw. And you know, as usual for us, the hands win the race. So your hands are ahead of the golf ball here prior to impact. Draw with that green circle right there. And then we're going to impact the ball. You know, the head stays back, but the you know upper swing center is still in front of the ball enough to where we're, in, we're uh, ensuring that the low point of the golf swing will be in front of the golf ball, so we're hitting the golf ball on the way down, and then we would get into the mat and scuff the mat. And then, you know, we, we're trying to release the club a little bit and get the toe 
just to kind of pass the heel and cover. And so we see here at this point in the swing, you know, that toe is more pointing up than, uh, than face up, if you will. So uh, really good job of just in one, you know, range session kind of incorporating what we talked about there. So another thing that I notice, and, and this is something that we, you know, is not really uh, related to the swinging action, but just a, a, an address uh, tweak. Um, I noticed that, you know, the other day we mentioned that your stance width, we wouldn't want it to be any narrower than it is right here. And so if we draw lines up from your top of your right foot, We'll go kind of right there, and then we go from the top of your left foot. We'll go straight up about right there. Um, I would say, and in looking at some of your earlier videos, we've gotten that stance a little too narrow. You know, some guys can play from a narrow stance, but you're 6'2", so you're, a, you know, you're taller, so you're center of gravity is going to be a little higher and so you need probably a little wider base from which to play and that's going to help us do a couple of things. Um, we'll take a look at this fellow over here on the right and you know we look at his stance width and his stance width. He's favoring his left side, yes, and so his stance width kind of gives him that look where uh, you know the left leg uh, the line up from the left leg looks about the same as yours. It's coming up kind of through that knee, and then there's some of our left shoulder that's kind of on the target side or the net side of the line. But then you see where the line that comes up from the right foot, uh, in his case, he's, you know, he's got this space over here um, between that line and the right part of his body. We'll just kind of draw that with a green box here. You know that space there, and then for us, of course, we don't we don't have any space there. So, what I what I'd like for you to do is go ahead and widen that stance. Um, you know, if if uh, you know ball position is going to be the same, so we want the ball position to still be in the middle or just slightly in front of the middle. If the golf club is in the middle, then the ball is in front of that. But uh, Let's go ahead and widen that stance a little bit again, and I'll show you a video of yours previously where the stance was wider. And I know we've gone, gone through some different uh, incarnations of this swing um, and kind of getting a feel for what's best for us. At one time we had gotten too wide, and now we've gotten too narrow. So we're going to kind of find, you know, what's, what's that happy medium for us? So here's what that would look like. On the right was from March sometime, right? So just a few months ago. Um, and this, in this uh, video on the right-hand side when you're in the green shirt, I had tagged that as uh, setting up left. And so you can see, just like the guy we saw in the previous video, you're set up where you're favoring your left side here. We see some of your left shoulder poking through that left foot line. And then some of your knee and left pant leg are kind of up through that line as well. And then over here on the right shoulder, we don't have as much space as that other guy had, but we do have space here where none of our upper, you know, none of our body on the, just a little bit of our pant leg on the right leg, but none of our body here is on or through this uh, left uh, right right line coming out of the right leg so if you were to widen your stance this much and basically it may just be a function of dropping the right leg back away from the target right so if you uh, you know if, if we erase a line here over on your side and I take that line and rather than put it on top of your foot I put it out here to the outside of your foot and I drew that straight up you know that's probably going to replicate you know what we were looking at back in March and so if you were to just take your foot and move it probably what equates to half the width of your foot you know maybe even the full width of your foot but get that base a little bit wider so that you have a little bit more of a stable platform to, to swing from um, and I think that's going to do a couple of things that's going to allow you to stay centered um, even more 
it's going to allow you to uh, turn and you know stay centered but still feel some shift where you're able to brace against your inner right leg and then like we said that'll give you something then that can move to the left a lot more readily than uh, what we had when we kind of turned our hips and had our butt you know kind of jutting out towards the target more so if we take both of these swings to the top you know yeah on the right side you know we had shortened the arm swing at that time we were kind of work, working on that punch feel and everything so we do want the arms to be higher that the, the hands to be higher than that but the idea here is that you see the lower body um, is a little more stable you know we did at that time say that we want to go ahead and let that left knee release in here just a little bit towards the golf ball but nothing dramatic um, and whereas we see over here on the uh, left video you've done a good job of letting that left knee kind of release back in and point towards the target but our feet are so close together it kind of has the both knees kind of coming together and so there lacks some of that firmness and stability of that wider base that's going to allow us to use our lower body to our advantage like you had been previously um, and now we'll incorporate that with a better ability to turn and kind of a better understanding of why we do that and, and you know what that's for um, then we'll be able to get the best of both worlds. We'll have the stability of the lower body with that wider base like you had over here in March, but the, uh, be able to capitalize on this better turn here on the, on the uh, left side. So if we go back to this guy on the, on the right-hand video, you know, there's not a tremendous amount of difference here. You have your hands higher. He has his hands higher. But what we can see where he... Uh, moves to the top you know his left knee releases back towards the ball you know but he's his lower body turn uh, since he has a little bit wider base he's able to stabilize that lower body turn so he's a little more athletically engaged here in the lower body whereas our lower body is you know really kind of working to keep itself balanced and everything from that that much more narrow stance and uh, so essentially just widening the stance is going to help us look a little bit more like this solid top of the backswing position over here on the right and then when we widen the stance what we'll want to do then is uh, limit the hip turn you're doing a good job of incorporating the hip turn but we probably have too much there because we're probably looking at about maybe 60 degrees of hip turn there maybe more whereas we probably really only want maybe 40 to 45 degrees of hip turn if if we say that uh, facing the camera is square and zero then when we turn to the top you know we'd probably only want really only this much hip turn or maybe just a tad more and you can see there the relationship then in your video you know your shoulders would be perfectly 90 degrees turned to the uh, you know towards the ball there so your back is perfectly facing the target and then these hips would probably have turned like I said about if you know if we assume a 45 uh, to 90 ratio then the difference between the hip hip turn and the uh, shoulder turn is about 45 degrees whereas this fellow over here kind of similar thing you know he's got uh, you know probably turn I can't see for his hat but probably turned probably a pretty square back to the target right so he's kind of turned 90 degrees to this ball target line down here you know and then his hip turn is less and with his wider stance he's just able to really maximize that stable lower body so I think that's going to help us and then from here you know we'll be able to kind of raise our hands even more and I think that will help you kind of get back your rhythm you know have the body still leading right so now the body won't have as far to go to get the forward swing started again because once we get all turned around here almost like we're turning around back facing the house um, really the first thing we have to do once we've turned this much to the top the first thing we have to do in our downswing is kind of reestablish maybe a little more appropriate top of the backswing turn right and then from there start our 
start our downswing. So that's kind of from a sequencing and a rhythm standpoint probably getting in our way a little bit. But the overall swinging of the club, the overall action of the body and the way you're using your body is pretty good. But I think we've just kind of gotten ourselves uh, just a little bit narrow in the stance to where, where we're not able to really support what the upper body and the hands and club are doing. But really good job here of getting the hands up. Really good job of getting them down and from the inside. You're getting into your left side good. So keep working on that, and let's just go with a little wider uh, stance um, and kind of put some of the athleticism back into our swing that we had previously. We'll keep going. We'll get it. 